So welcome back. My name is Mark Jengrass. Today we're going to start where we left off on the previous lesson. So if you haven't seen the previous lessons, please go back and play catch up. Uh, we're not very far, so you can jump in right here if you really need to. We have an R Markdown file that is already established for us because we created a new project called Project 1. Our project files are here to the right and we have some code and our console at the bottom. What I want to show you in this particular lesson is some of the R Markdown capabilities that'll create pretty cool HTML files. Previously we created this HTML file. Let's view that in the browser. And we have some links, we have some headers, we have some plots and tables, etc, etc. Going back, let's say that we don't want this link to be like that. What we can do is actually embed HTML within our markdown. So instead of seeing this, we're going to say C and we'll type in this link and we'll make this link an actual link using this time around actual HTML. So we would actually do a href equals and we'd put it in quotes and then we'd have the link there and if you don't know HTML, do not worry. This example is purely just for demonstration purposes and we're going to avoid HTML from this point on. But I want to show you that you can for some of the more advanced users that actually know a little bit of HTML or you can do some research on it. And we'll close out that reference there. So we have a, a reference to this link that will be tied to this. Now what we're going to do is we're going to knit this by clicking on that knit button. Now, as you can see, I have the link as an actual link because it actually interpreted the HTML. Pretty cool. Now, every time I run this, I can open it in a browser, which I highly advise you to do because the this right here is just an, a browser, an RStudio rendering of this as if it was in a browser, but you truly should check these out in your own native browser like this. That way there's no confusion. Sometimes there might be an error within our studio's browser rendering versus Chrome or IE, whatever you use. Let's close that out. So I showed you how to do links using HTML. Now, instead of HTML, I have that copied still. So if you don't copy that RStudio site, let's do, let's see if I can remember this. It's been a minute. We are gonna put it in parentheses and brackets. So this bracket, I call it a left and right bracket. We're going to put in the word link and then right afterwards we're going to put it in parentheses the actual link without quotes. This is markdown language and you can find a lot more about markdown language in various um, websites. Just look up R markdown or markdown language tips. Notice this is all I did. I'm going to knit this and we're going to see the same exact thing. Pretty cool. So you can actually embed HTML or you can use the markdown language, which is a little bit cleaner and probably preferred in, in this environment. Now you see this little uh, star star knit star star. The star star means bold. Let's run this again and I'll show you where the word knit is. You'll notice it is in fact bold. Pretty cool. Simple as that. It makes it bold. An awesome little tip. If you highlight something like uh, the word document, you can double click on it to highlight it, hold shift and hit the star and you'll notice a star shows up on both ends of the document. By the way, when there's only one star, that is in italic. So let's knit that and we will see the word document is in fact in italics. Uh, you want to make a bold, double click, shift star, it puts two more stars on there and now we have a bold document. I'm not going to run it right now. Are you finding these videos useful? If so, maybe give it a share on a social media. Let others know where to find a good resource for R&R &R programming. It'll help me grow my channel and continue to make more content for you. Thanks. Now, a couple other things is you saw the heading up here, this R Markdown. What if it was a little too big or you wanted to make that a third level heading? Simply just add another star. Also, this space, I believe, is very important. Let's double check that. Let's knit it the way it is. It's kind of fun to create these. Our markdown's a little bit smaller than the including plots because the including plots had two levels or two, uh, header two, I believe. This is header three, and it worked. 
Now you're going to find some frustrations, like little simple things, like if I don't put that space there, what'll, what will happen? It didn't do level three. It in fact did level basically the paragraph level. And so that can be very frustrating because space does matter in our markdown. So we need that space after the three hashtags. And the same thing for a lot of other things. Let me show you another thing that's very common is add in bulleted lists. Um, we're gonna hit enter here on line 11. So we're now on line 12. I'm gonna say this is a list and I'll put a colon there. Now, a new line, I'm gonna hit the star button, shift eight two spaces. Another thing, this will drive you a little bit crazy because you're going to forget that it's two spaces. You're gonna use one, you're gonna to have to go Google this. It's two spaces, item one, enter, star, two spaces, item two, enter, star, item three. So I almost have a bulleted list, but not quite. Let's run it the way it is and I'll show you the errors because this is also gonna drive you a little bit nuts. Okay, this is a list and it did not work. Why did that not work? Again, more space problems. Um, it's not the space below, it is actually, but it's the space between lines 12 and 13. The bulleted list has to be on its own with the space between it. Even this won't work correctly. I mean, it does, but look at item three. It adds all the rest to it. That's, that's basically what I was going to show you and get at. So now this, with the, all that extra space in there, knitting that is the correct way to do a list. Now we have a proper list. That's pretty common, so I wanted to make sure to show you all of those things. There's all kinds of other things you can do, like a horizontal rule, which is four dashes. But again, it's the spaces that really get you. One, two, three, four. If I literally just run this, I don't believe that it'll work. There are, yeah, well, first of all, that's wrong in multiple ways. One, I didn't add the space here. Now, if I run that, it did actually work. So spaces matter on some things and don't on, and doesn't on, on other things. You'll just have to get used to the fact that spaces really do cause issues with our markdown. Again, if you want to add instead of a bulleted list, we can do a numbered list by doing one period and then two spaces. Item one, two period, two spaces, item two. Sounds sounds crazy, but it's true. That's what you have to do. Now we should have one, two, and three perfectly lined up. You can also do things like superscript and subscript. So if I want to do superscript, I would do x. Say I want to do x squared. So I want to do an actual x squared like this, but I want that two to be actually raised up. Uh, you actually have to put the little another exponent. I'm not even sure what that's called, but you can see that the x squared is is actually squared. Okay, anyways, look up and I'll show you links throughout in some of the documentation, but look up some of the R Markdown. It's really interesting and fun to learn and you can actually use it just for HTML for that matter. If you tried to knit under PDF and you get the error, which you will most likely because you don't have MCTech and you're gonna just have all this red error stuff and then you go to knit again, it's gonna still be under PDF. So you need to go to the down arrow, hit knit to HTML again, and you'll see that it actually knits to HTML. Pretty cool, this is a regular HTML file. What you do notice though, there is some code in here like summary cars, but you can't hide it, you can't, it's gotta be there. So there's another thing called an R notebook, which I will show you in the next tutorial. I hope this video was useful, and if it was, leave a comment below, let me know how, and also subscribe. That'll help me grow my channel and continue creating videos like this.